I get to play with lava on an almost daily basis. And that's my job. <laughs> so I started Glass in, in CCAD in 93. I had a friend call me up and he asked me if I could help him with some punties and bits. And at the time I had no idea what that meant. And so I went down to the hot shop and helped him out and that was it. So I took glass blowing the next two years as much as I could. I had to drop out in 94, uh, worked in a tattoo and piercing studio for six years. That's when I met Gwen and then um, with her support and you know uh, encouragement, started getting back into glass again. Uh, shortly after that, uh, our son was born. So when it came down to it, it was easier for her to go back to work because it was more stable. And so then I was a stay at home parent. We talked about opening the shop probably for as long as we've been married, which is over 20 years. So we just decided to open up the shop. And in the shop, I do most of the business stuff. I do all the marketing, the website, the sales, all of those things. And then I also assist in the glass blowing. So I'm kind of at an apprentice level. Glass blowing is a team sport. You know, if you want to make more complex things, you have to have other people. That's just really all there is to it. And stop, please. Beautiful, thank you. You know, you can do things by yourself. It is more limiting just because you don't have enough hands or, you know, enough heat or, you know, there are a multitude of factors that come into that. But I mean, when you do stuff by yourself, it has a tendency to be more simplistic. As soon as something gets into two gathers or more, it can get a little unwieldy for me. And plus also since transitioning, I'm not as strong as I used to be. So the things I was able to do before, I can't do anymore. I'm just very fortunate. I have a lot of support and, you know, and a lot of people around me that help make this happen. It's kind of strange being like being in Delaware and sort of being isolated and being trans and being in glass, there's not a whole lot of us that are like that. So there are some non-binary folks and there's some trans folks and then we'll see how things play out in the future. You know, glass is a very, you know, white male dominated thing, you know, and so, but I've seen people try to take strides in making sure it's more equitable for everybody across the spectrum. And to kind of be a part of that, I think would be nice. Glass is a really immediate process and that's one of the reasons why I love it. You can make something and when you put it away in the annealer, you're done for the day. Um, it's not like painting or drawing or clay, clay especially, like where you have this time where you can go back in and kind of noodle something. You have to make decisions and you have to make them right away. You're not forcing the glass into what you think it should be doing. You're talking to it and you use the tools to talk to it. Um, how you use those tools is like just how you talk to anybody else. If you use the tools aggressively or you use them in a manner they're not supposed to be, then you know the glass is probably not going to do what you want to do. It's kind of alive and you, I guess it goes back to the whole teamwork thing. It's, you're a team with the glass. You kind of have to know how to speak to it for it to do what you want it to do. And if it doesn't like what you have to say, it's not gonna do it. It used to be a standard oil service station. It was built in late 1930s. I really enjoy taking buildings and putting them back into their original look as much as I can. So when I saw the space, all I could see was just what it could be. We're in the gallery space now, and we're hoping to have a gallery for emerging artists, um, glass blowing students from CCAD or OSU or some of the other local places. It's always interesting to see which people respond to what things. Some people walk in and they will immediately head for all of the red glass or other people will walk in and they'll immediately look at the perfume bottles 
and those will remind somebody of their grandmother's perfume bottle collection. And you know, it's nice to see that little personal connection. And then when they buy a piece of glass and they take it home, that's a piece of glass that they're gonna have for many years. And some of them, they'll even pass that piece down to their children. So it's nice having a little piece of pretty beautiful things that can go into the next generation. I'm definitely more of a what you would call a craftsperson now, not necessarily an artist. And I'm okay with that. That's kind of where my happy place is. I'm most happy making those sort of things. If I can make things that are nice. Very gently, there you go. Beautiful. If people resonate with the things that I make and they want to take it home and they feel happy about that, then I've won. That's, that's to me, that's the end of the day. That's the goal. Thank you.